the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God. And the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, today we will hear about the doubting Thomas who struggled to believe. We all struggle to believe the good news when what we see on TV is so much death and destruction. We struggle to believe in mercy when there is so much selfish violence. Today is also called Divine Mercy Sunday. Let us choose to believe in mercy, in new life, in the good news. Let us choose to follow Christ today. And so, my dear brothers and sisters, let us now humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless the water he has created, which will be sprinkled in us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Lord our God, in your mercy, be present to your people's prayers and for us who recall the wondrous work of our creation and the still greater work of our redemption. Graciously bless this water, for you created water to make the fields fruitful and to refresh and cleanse our bodies. You also made water the instrument of your mercy, for true water you freed your people from sla slavery and quenched their thirst in the desert. Through waters, the prophets proclaimed the new covenant you were to enter upon the human race. And last of all, through water, which Christ made holy in the Jordan, you have renewed our corrupted nature in the bath of regeneration. Therefore, may this water be for us a memorial of the baptism we have received and grant that we may share in the gladness of our brothers and sisters who at Easter have received their baptism through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God cleanse us of our sins and through the celebration of this Eucharist make us worthy to share at the table of his kingdom. Amen. Oh. 
of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindled the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to the teaching of the Apostles and to the communal life, to the breaking of bread and to the prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exultation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good His love is everlasting Give thanks to the Israel say, His mercy endures 
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy gave us a new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who by the power of God are safeguarded through faith to a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the final time. In this, you rejoice, although now for a little while, you may have to suffer through various trials so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that is perishable even though tested by fire, may prove to be for praise, glory, and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Although you have not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, yet you believe in him. You rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy joy, as you attain the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, even though the disciples had locked the doors of the place where they were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. And Jesus then said again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you shall retain, 
they are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I place my hand in the mark of the nails and put my finger into the nail marks and my hand into the side, I will not believe. Now, a week later, the disciples were once again in the same upper room, and Jesus came through the doors despite them being locked. He stood in their midst and once again said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Bring your hand and put it in my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to them, Have you come to believe because you saw me? Blessed are those who have never seen me and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, signs that are not written in this book, but these are written so that you might come to believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. Let us give thanks to the Lord for such great faith that we are still able to proclaim the risen Christ. It is true such great faith that even with your physical absence here in the church, you still continue to share with us and partake of the sacrifice that Jesus offered once and for all. Such a great faith, and we thank the Lord for this. Although at times there may be situations in our lives that, like Thomas in today's Gospel, we will have our doubts. There are times in our lives when problems, difficulties will arise. Doubts will come in. And we begin to question, where are you, God? And like Thomas, we would like to put a condition on our faith. As with him, we say, unless... I see the marks of the nail in his hands and put my finger on the nail marks and touch his side. I will not believe. Yes, my dear friends, Thomas was not a bad man. Though he doubted, yet he still as a good man, and in fact, when he uttered those words, when Jesus was about to go back to Jerusalem, he even invited the rest of the apostles, let us go back to Jerusalem and die with him. Yes, doubt comes in, and it is painful to experience doubt. It is painful to experience confusion because of the feeling of doubt we are experiencing. Well then come to think about the situation way back weeks or months before. When the news broke out about the coronavirus, some others were in doubt. Is it a hoax? Is it something like to 
instill fear on the people? There were confusions. So much so that some other civic leaders were not able to prepare themselves and their constituents in combating the upcoming crisis, which was really unexpected. But now we come to believe. However, has anyone seen a virus? Except for those people who use the microscope, most of us haven't seen a virus, yet we come to believe that indeed there is a virus and it's creating havoc in our lives. So much so that with a basic principle that has been believed to be effective before, saying that to see is to believe, it is at this present moment a nonsense. Because in fact, with the present technology that we have, situations can be distorted, facts can be deleted, it can be deformed, and so on and so forth. And with the different views we hear from the social media, we come to be confused already. So much so that even if it is true, but there comes the doubt how real, how genuine the news is. Again, let us thank the Lord the truth is gift of faith, even without his physical presence, we continue to partake of this Holy Eucharist. Even through the video that you are watching now, you still believe in the presence of Christ. As the bread becomes his body, as the wine becomes his blood. And again, I would say, doubting would not make us bad people. And yet, with our trust and confidence in God, with the gift of faith, we are all made strong. There are two things that we have to reflect upon with what the Gospel reading is telling us all about. First, it is the patient understanding of Jesus in our weaknesses, in our sinfulness, Jesus continues to be patient with us. He understands our human condition. It is because he loves us so much. And there comes the second point our humble acknowledgement of our sinfulness, of our weaknesses. Just like Thomas, as we come to feel and experience, experience the presence of the Lord without even touching him, as we are not told that Thomas indeed, upon seeing Jesus touch him, immediately he professed his faith, saying, My Lord and my God. And so, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, let us continue with our prayers, asking the Lord for more strength, for more courage to face with whatever difficulties that we are experiencing right now. With the pandemic, that continues, and we do not know until when, our trust and our hope should continue always and ever to ask the Lord 
that he will be on our side. As I mentioned earlier, this Sunday we celebrate also the Divine Mercy Sunday. And if you could see the picture of the risen Christ, under it are the words, Jesus, I trust in you. It is through these words that all the more our faith will be strengthened. And I hope that things will be over, that we will be back to our normal lives. And so, with Thomas, we continue to profess our faith as we say, My Lord and my God, Jesus, I trust in you. God bless you. I thank all of you for listening to our broadcast today. And you are very close to our hearts and very close to our prayers today as we celebrate the Mass even remotely together. And I thank uh, Father Boy for celebrating the Mass today and also for giving the homily. And I'm also grateful to our lector and our movie uh, producer and to our musicians for sharing in the Mass today as well. I have a very important announcement that I'd like to share with you today. The Archbishop has asked all of the priests who are being transferred or being retired uh, to announce their successors. And uh, this week, uh, the Archbishop has appointed a new pastor for St. Robert's Parish, Father Arnold Zamora, the pastor of Holy Name Church in San Francisco. Father Boy, our associate pastor, and uh, Father Zamora were ordained for the same diocese in the Philippines. And uh, Father Zamora has been a priest of the Archdiocese of San Francisco for over 20 years. He also led the same choir of priests that Father Boy uh, belongs to. And he's a very musical, talented person and loves to share that gift with uh, many people. I've had the opportunity to meet uh, Father Zamora a number of times uh, when I did funerals at Holy Names, and I always found him to be a very pleasant and very encouraging person. And so I'm grateful that you're getting a good pastor and that he will be a part of the life of St. Robert's. When Father Zamora announced to his staff, as I did to our staff here at St. Robert's last Thursday, that he was leaving. Many of his staff members were truly brokenhearted because he had shared with them his talents and his generosity as a priest for over 11 years. So I know that you'll welcome him to St. Robert's when I retire and that he'll be a very special part of this wonderful parish. Now, at the same time, the Archbishop told me that I may be here a little bit longer than I thought I would. Because of the coronavirus, uh, Father uh, Arnold will possibly not be able to come on July 1st, the traditional time uh, that the changes are made in the Archdiocese. It's uncertain right now, uh, but I could possibly be here a little bit longer, uh, either through July or even August. And the Archbishop asked me if I was willing to do that, and I said that I was. But if things, uh, you know, are better and things seem calmer, uh, then Father Arnold will come as scheduled uh, in July. So I hope you'll pray for him as an, our new pastor. I hope you'll pray for Father Boy as his associate. And I hope you'll also pray for me as I retire. I've been so lucky to, and so fortunate to be your pastor for the last seven and a half years. And I know that you're getting a good new pastor and that God will bless him and all of you in his ministry here. Thank you.
Let us now profess our faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, called to believe what we cannot see, let us pray for true abiding faith and eyes open to the miracles all around us. For our church leaders, especially Pope Francis in thanksgiving for their inspiration during this global crisis, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For fruitful collaboration among government leaders at all levels and internationally during this pandemic, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those most at risk, frontline workers, those living in confined situations, the frail, elderly, the homeless, and those with underlying health conditions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died from COVID-19 and their families and those suffering from it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill among our families and parishioners and for their caregivers and for those who have died, especially Agnes Piva, mother of Sandy Mangold, Paul Dreyer, brother of Father Bruce Dreyer, and Natalio and Rosa Cadimatori. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions written in our parish book of petitions and for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful and loving God, hear our prayers and be with us as we try to live as disciples of your Son. We pray always in the name of Jesus, your Son, the risen Christ who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands to the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain an ending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together, then ending him of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For to your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy, these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks as to the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. this bread and when we drink this God we proclaim your death O Lord until you come again Therefore Lord as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your son his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven and as we look forward to his second coming 
we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by us that you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an everlasting gift to you and enable us to share in the inheritance with your chosen, especially with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, Saint Robert, and all the saints on whose constant intercession we rely for your unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Strengthen in faith and love your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Archbishop, myself, the unworthy pastor of this parish, and all the bishops, clergy, and religious, and the entire people your Son has gained for you alone. Listen graciously now to the prayers of the family who have gathered here before you. In mercy and in love, unite your children wherever they may be. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ the Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At a Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that with the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but to the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth glorifying the name of the Lord by your life. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.
We thank all of you for joining us at the Mass today, and we will continue the video Mass every Sunday until the church reopens. And it will be available hopefully every Sunday after 8 a.m. and possibly in the evening on Saturdays. Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming out. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. I love that uh, the uh, solo.